Cowboy Bebop and Netflix cancellation could doom future anime adaptations. Oh god, let it be so, because nobody has asked for this. Nobody wants it, nobody welcomes it, you don't get the news of an anime becoming a live action and see roaring crowds in the streets going like, yay, yay, finally they're gonna ruin my favourite franchise. No, obviously not. And yet it keeps happening. It keeps happening because Netflix doesn't understand what the hell it's doing wrong. From Netflix's point of view, as a bunch of soulless corporate bastards, essentially, they think to themselves, okay, we make entertainment. We can make a, an original show and maybe it'll be a hit, maybe it won't. We'll spend a lot of money and we won't know what's going to happen until we've already spent all of the money. It's a massive gamble, although one that has paid up uh, out repeatedly for Netflix. In fact, pretty much their biggest hits tend to be the stuff they themselves produce. Deuce. But they think to themselves, okay, if making our own shit is such a massive risk, how about we take something that already has a fandom and then we just do that? That's brilliant, right? If we take a thing and we grab it, we hold it down, we brutalize it, we violently tear its asshole open and display its innards for the adoring public, they will surely cheer. No. <laughs> Doesn't happen that way, because the anime version is always universally, inescapably superior to the live action version, for the simple reason that it's a drawing. It can be perfect. It's one of those things that you kind of struggle to explain, isn't it? This is a, is a live action picture. It's always going to have certain issues. The lighting's going to be off, the characters aren't going to look quite right, There's going to be, they're going to be either too scruffy or not scruffy enough. The interior of the spaceship is going to look off, it's going to look too scruffy or not scruffy enough. You're going to struggle finding the correct actors, you're going to struggle finding the correct voices to match the characters, to match their persona, their appearances etc. And half of the time, being Netflix, they simply decide to race and gender swap them anyways, or simply cast someone who's not interested in actually playing the role. Faye Valentine here being the perfect example, a woman that was at no point interested in actually portraying Faye Valentine. Or Spike Siegel here, who is a black man for, well, two reason, so that Netflix can make him an absent parent. <sighs> That's one. And so that an old woman can hit on him and go like, Oh, you accuse me of blackmail? Well, it's because you're a blackmail. Ah, ha, 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 shoot me. But if this ungodly failure will finally put the entirety of anime live action ideas to bed and hammer the final nail in the coffin, then at the end of the day, it was a pretty goddamn good thing that Cowboy Bebop existed. Unfortunately, I don't think Netflix is going to be learning their lesson anytime soon. And what they tried here as well is kind of interesting because you would think, right? Okay, if we just shoot it like the anime, then the anime fans will totally be satisfied, right? Well, they kind of tried it. There was this uh, lovely little tweet made to show the disparity between the scene with Vicious and Spike. So in the anime, you've got the huge stained glass window there. It's sending for pure white light, angelic light, illuminating Vicious in his white hair, drawing attention to the sword, which also is illuminated by the light reflections, which in time goes down to Spike, which goes up to his gun, and it shows this beautiful standoff right here. The problem is, if you do this in reality, it turns out that an enormous stained glass window in the middle of night, by the way, is it really going to produce those kind of lighting effects? Weird. Once more, basic physics and reality seems to object to the animification of real life. Now, they could have changed this in post-processing, uh, they could have changed the scene to be in daylight, they could have, um, Ah, well, they could, they could have turned them the right way around. Instead of having them against the stained glass, they could have had them sideways on in the anime. That would have helped, but... Nevertheless, you were never going to get that same effect. You are going to get this, a 
blurry, darkish picture where, you know, this guy's holding up his hands. If you look really closely, you can kind of see the sword here. If anything, the pistol actually stands out better because it's black against the blue of the stained glass. And again, on a very, very basic level, trying to make anime look good in reality isn't going to work out nine times out of ten. But what is more interesting as well, this article doesn't really care over much about the actual show. It cares more about the, the representation and how the minorities are sweating that if this fails, they'll never get to see another black person on screen again. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to address that point, because it has been hammered to death over the years. But what is interesting is that you've got here an entertainment article in an entertainment section complaining not about the show being goddamn awful or how Netflix has to do better, but how this was a missed opportunity to shill their favoured political points online. And this returns us to the entire idea of the... The, the enthusiast press. I talked about this in a little video previously in gaming and how we don't have an enthusiast press anymore. We have shills, paid political shills, or not paid only on occasion anyways, paid a minimum wage because otherwise their failing businesses can't sustain themselves. And this isn't just in gaming, it is all over the field. A recent example is, Wheel of Time is not doing the numbers that were expected, but that's the idea! Ah yes, we anticipated economic disaster, and in fact, we aimed for it! Rightio then, very much so like the Netflix one. Cowboy Bebop isn't supposed to be good, you must understand. Yes, yes, we went out of our way to make a, a boring, turgid mess with uninteresting characters and <clears throat> we threw in Ed, by the way, to really make sure there was no hope for a second season. Kind of like a, like a threat at the end, really. Ed is the personification of a loaded gun held to the audience's temple, just in case any one of them was stupid enough to go like, yes, yes, I'd like some more of this, Ed would pop up on screen and go, ha ha ha, are you sure about that? No, not at all. And even in the case of something like Wheel of Time, right, which is not a disastrous TV show, it's not particularly interesting, and the silent song of the timeline button at the bottom of the video player going skip, 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 skip is often irresistible, but eh, it's something. And generally speaking, both the critic and the audience score for the series are pretty good, though in general, you will note a pretty clear divide in the reviews here. Basically, anyone who's actually been reading the books and the source material they're not liking this particularly much at all and tend to give very, very, very low score reviews. Meanwhile, the people who have no idea what Wheel of Time is, and he's basically seeing another version of Game of Thrones, but with more chicks in it this time, they're kind of loving it. Lord of the Rings vibes. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't see say that the two are completely unrelated, both have literally Satan sending forth hordes of beastmen to ravage the world and so on, and the history of the fate of the world hangs on the shoulders of one person, except there's not a ring involved in the Wheel of Time, it's just, you know, a wheel. Because the Wheel of Time, again, it's not terrible, but it's not good either. The actual structure of the TV show is severely lacking, in that the various motivations of the characters are practically non-existent, and they add in a lot of just pointless nonsense. One of the main characters kills his wife in the first episode. He didn't have a wife in the books, and the wife has no... He, she's not built up or anything. She doesn't have a character. You don't get to know her. They find Beastman and then he freaks out because his wife taps him on the shoulder and, you know, women lie large. You know, they're they're kind of like giant furry monstrosities, right? And so he turns around and attacks her in the midriff with a giant axe, as one does. After this, after having killed his wife with his own two hands, in one of the most brutal ways imaginable, with a literal axe... He gets over it remarkably quickly, and it's pretty much never mentioned again, really. It's, it's just a thing that happened, 
for no reason beyond going, hey, we heard you liked Game of Thrones, so we copied their intro like 100%, and then we have random gory deaths happening to characters, because we know you like that. We're gonna have somebody get raped awfully soon, don't you worry. We're building up to that still, you know. We can't throw it all in the first episode now, can we? And the introduction as well. Now, in Wheel of Time, there used to be male and female sorcerers, and they fought against literal Satan because Satan wanted to ruin the world, as Satan tends to do. And so the male sorcerers, being the most powerful ones, led the charge and managed to imprison the devil. But in return, he drove them all mad, so they started destroying the entire world, pretty much, whilst the far less powerful women would either try to gentle them by removing their connection to the warp, or magic, whatever you want to call it, or outright killing them, one out of two. And it required a lot of female sorcerers to do this. In the TV show, there's um, one false dragon, somebody who pretends to be the big bad good sorcerer dude, and they need like three or four of the female spellcasters to gentle him. Whereas in the, the book, in the background lore, there are instances where a hundred plus Aes Sedai are required to gentle one batshit insane male. That's the kind of strength differential you're dealing with here. And so, obviously, they've grown slightly hostile towards male sorcerers, unsurprisingly. But in the TV show, they don't lead with any of that. Instead, they simply say that, oh, oh one day, the men just went crazy and decided to aggress upon the demons for no particular reason. Just one day, in their hubris, they were like, hmm, how about we throw the devil in jail? Yes, this sounds like a spiffing idea. And after failing to do that, they just started killing people. Because reasons. They don't even know if the Dragon Reborn is a male or a female, apparently, which again, there is absolutely no question about this whatsoever in the book. Nobody doubts this. This is this is absolute historical fact. The the I, there was a wonderful example brought up in the chat in a recent stream where basically said that the Aes Sedai mistaking the gender of the dragon is like the Catholic Church mistaking the gender of Jesus Christ. Which is pretty much spot on, really. And yet, despite not being able to do as well as it was expected to, there is still defense run for it by people who have no stake in this whatsoever. Beyond the political stakes, I do suppose, Screen Rant has no stake in a Wheel of Time. They're not shareholders, they didn't make this, they, they didn't help make this, they make money off covering it. But since they are politically involved and political activists, they look at a TV show that has a lot of political points to make, modern day political points, of course, about how men are all very, very bad, you see, and the matriarchy would work out so much better in this world overrun by beastmen and demon spawn. Doomed to inevitable destruction at the hands of literally Satan, unless a man rides in to save the day. Hmm interesting message but then again what is that saying oh yes um everything is political <laughs> if you interpret it hard enough and you bend and break it hard enough i do suppose there's a kernel of truth to that ah yes if i simply just randomly interpret all of this to mean something completely unrelated then it's totally a commentary on the coal mining crisis in england in 1984 you see yeah, well, very well. But this is, it's, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? We're probably going to be seeing less of it, honestly. Normally I'd say we're going to, it's only going to get worse. But frankly, as more and more of these shows fail, and more and more defense is run for the shows, obviously retided defense like this, it'll only make the grief more obvious to the vast majority of people. And it's already pretty obvious, with Rotten Tomatoes being a fantastic example, where half of the time you have the critic score and the audience score being up there and down there simultaneously, where reviewing various shows has become more of a well, political point-making exercise rather than actually giving information as to whether or not a TV show is worth watching or not. On that topic too, The Wheel of Time, should you watch it? If you read the books, it's just gonna piss you off. Don't. If you didn't read the books, well, go read the goddamn books. And if you can't be asked to read, 
then go watch the TV show. You'll be bored on occasion, but hey, it's flashy lights and magic and beastmen, so there's something to be said for that, isn't it? Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment in the comment section down below. Have a good day.